So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tent related tips, things such as quick release guy lines, how to fix a broken pole in the field and lots of other stuff in between that might help you out when you're out camping. Let's crack on and get pitched up. The first tip I've got for you is to use a footprint or a ground sheet. To be honest with you, I don't use these all the time, but it does have some benefits. First one is it will add a layer of protection for the bottom of your tent. So that will reduce the chance of getting punctures or just general wear and tear to the ground sheet of your actual tent. It's not needed today, but I also recommend having some little carabiner on your rucksack. You can clip things to it, including your tent. So if the wind was to catch it, you know, it's not gonna blow away off the mountain. So this isn't the actual footprint for this tent. But a full coverage footprint will also help reduce condensation. It'll stop some of the moisture from the wet ground, you know, just rising upwards and then condensating on your fly sheet. So when you're putting your poles together, make sure that both sections butt up really tight. If you start flexing your poles with a gap like that, it's gonna create a weak point and you're more likely to snap or damage a pole. So make sure not to put too much pressure on your poles. If you think that they're gonna snap, <laughs> probably will. So these are the pegs that come with this tent. They're like an, a Y shape, a bit like groundhog pegs. So this is all personal preference, but I always swap out the pegs that, that come with a tent. And I like to take a variety of different styles and for different types of ground and different situations. You can hammer these sort of long nail pegs into some really hard ground um, and they hold incredibly solid. Whereas this style of peg might be a little bit better for softer ground. Then I have smaller ones for things like just pegging doors back. It's nice to have different options. This one might be common sense, but whenever possible, you should always pitch the tent where the wind is hitting the back of the tent. If you've got the front facing the wind, every time you open this door, it's going to create like a massive wind sock and it's going to try and lift your tent off the hill. So when you're guying out and tensioning up your tent, you should always make sure that your tent doors are fully closed first. The zip tends to be one of the weaker points on the tent. So if you've got everything tensioned up with the door open, when you try and force the door closed, you can uh, damage the zip or even tear the material where it's sewn. So guy lines, ideally you want them tied up so they don't get tangled and you want to be able to just pull on them to release them. I was asked in my last video how I tie them. This is how I do it. So I just wrap it around my thumb and little finger. Just make a figure of eight. And then when I get to about this much cordage left, I just grab it, wrap it and overlap it a couple of times. Then I go the other side again, look. And then just a little half inch knot. And more thumbs, look. There we go. And that is tight. And then I can just pull that out from there. Everything is untangled, no knots or anything. So sometimes if it's really windy, you want that little bit of extra security and you might want to add another guy line. Tying one on is really easy. So just thread the end through your loop and then just give yourself about, I don't know, seven inches, something like that. Just twist it round 
two or three times like that and then just shove this loop back through there and then just tighten everything up that is really secure on there it's going nowhere until you pull this little cord out and it comes off really easy it's always worthwhile taking a little bit of extra cordage or pre-set up guy lines loop through there tail sticking out and just shove it up tighten everything up so you've got a loop and an end that's not going anywhere until you want it to and you pull on that tab right time to show you what to do if you get a snap pole I need to do a couple of thank yous first first up I'd like to thank all of you guys that have bought stuff through the website November's been our best month today and Joe's been working her socks off trying to get out all the bobble hats and shirts out to you guys but we wouldn't be able to take any orders if it wasn't for our Squarespace website so Squarespace makes it really easy for people like me and Joe to have a place on the internet to share our brand if you don't know anything about web design or coding or anything like that um, all we've had to do is choose one of the ready-made templates on the Squarespace platform and just tweak it and make it our own. We add our own photos, just change the text a little bit and move things around. We literally created a website from scratch in an evening. There are loads of features. We're able to process orders, check out all the analytics for how many web page visits we've had, how much money we've made. And I've been able to share my YouTube videos and now we even rank on Google. So it doesn't matter what you do, whether you're a YouTuber, you're a photographer, or your mum knits bobble hats in the bedroom. Uh, Squarespace has got something for you. So if you wanna have a go at creating a website of your own, just like me and Joe have, and then click the link in the description or head over to squarespace.com forward slash Paul Messner. You'll get a totally free trial and 10% off when you're ready to go live. So you've got absolutely nothing to lose. So a massive thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting our channel. So normally in your tent pole bag, you'll get one of these, which is a pole sleeve. I've got two or three of them just in case I get more than one breakage and these are slightly different diameters. So this pole, it's got two breakages in it. This is from an MSR tent. You just put the sleeve over the pole where the breakage is. In fact, I'm going to use the larger diameter one first and then just slide it till the breakage is in the middle of the pole sleeve. So I always keep some duct tape with me as well. You don't have to take a full roll. I always have some wrapped around my lighter. Take off a little bit of the duct tape. And I'm just gonna wrap it around the pole and the sleeve. All that's gonna do is just stop the sleeve from sliding about. So that will flex, so hopefully you can still use your pole um, in the normal way at least till you get home and then get your pole replaced same again on this one this one's a bit tighter there we go and I would just put a little bit of tape around there as well so now you can still bend your pole with these sleeves. So if your tent doesn't come with one of these sleeves, I do recommend you pick one up for emergencies. Pole repairs aren't normally a problem if you've got a tent like this, which has just got three straight poles. But a lot of modern pole designs now have some kind of hub here. And if one of these snaps off, which they do, um, then you're in a bit of trouble. There's no easy way to repair these. You're gonna need a new hub section. Um, you may be able to just somehow bodge it with a little bit of gaffer tape just to get you through the night, but more likely you're gonna end up either with a fly flapping around or you're gonna pack up and go home. Well, worth thinking about if you're considering a tent with a hub pole system. So one of the biggest Achilles heels of any tent is condensation. Some tents cope with it better than others, but there are certain conditions where 
it doesn't matter what tent you've got, you're gonna get moisture condensating on the inside of your fly. I even get it on tarps that are high off the ground. It's just physics, really. You can help reduce it by making sure your tent is well ventilated, so get your flaps open. You can leave a little gap at the top when you zip your door up. And if you can, try not to boil your water or cook inside your tent. That's just gonna increase the amount of water vapor that's inside. Having a ground sheet that covers all of the floor area will help too. Stop some of this moisture rising up and then condensating on this fly. As I said, condensation is inevitable at some point. I always take one of these extremely absorbent, it's a bit like a synthetic chamois leather, and then just keep the tent wiped down whenever you get a build up and try and remove as much of the moisture as you can. So moisture and wet tents are a bigger issue on multi-day trips. You want to try and always keep your inner tent dry, but there are times when you pack your fly sheet away and it's wet through. Also, when you add some rain on your tent, this sill nylon will stretch a little bit, so your guy lines that you tightened up when you pitched your tent will suddenly loosen off a little bit. So before you go to bed, just make sure that you just nip things up uh, and tighten your guy lines out again. It'll mean your tent's much more secure if the wind picks up. So a lot of tents now have the option to pitch both your inner and outer tent at the same time. Um, but you can also take the inner out. So if it's raining really bad, you can pack up your inner inside when it's dry, put it in a separate drive sack. And then on the next day when you want to pitch your tent, you just pitch the outer first, and clip your inner in from inside. That's also when having a ground sheet comes into its own. So you can have shelter of the fly and you've just got a ground sheet and you know, to keep you dry, just so you can get out of the rain before and dry things off a little bit before you pitch the inner tent. So although tents are waterproof, you also sometimes get little problems where maybe a seam is leaking. Maybe there's a few stitches where the holes are a little bit bigger. You find that water drips inside your tent. Always a good idea to have a little bit of um, seam sealant in your repair kit. This tent doesn't need it, but if, for example, you were getting a little bit of water dripping in from this seam, you could just dab a little bit of this stuff onto your finger, just run it down the seam, and that'll fill in the holes and stop the water getting in. I recommend you leave it as long as possible to dry though, because otherwise when you pack it up, you'll get blobs of sticky seam sealer all over your fly sheet. So another thing you can use your seam sealer for is if you've got a slippy uh, sleeping pad. So sometimes these tent floors are <laughs> very slippy and your, your pad slides around everywhere. You can put a few strips of this down on your tent bottom, let it dry. Obviously do this when you're at home on a nice day. It's really grippy stuff and that'll stop your sleeping pad from sliding around. I don't do it personally because I like to keep my tents just as they are out of the factory really. So something else I keep in my repair kit is some tenacious tape. This is just a, like an adhesive patch. So if you ever to get a little hole in your tent or especially in your ground sheet, um, you can always patch it up with this. Um, certain materials you might struggle getting it to stick to, but depending on what your tent's made of, you know, this will dig you out of a hole if you get a hole in your tent fly. See what I mean about condensation? I've not been in this tent other than for a minute and it's already forming on the, on the fly sheet. So it's just one of those sort of conditions that you're gonna get it no matter what tent you use. So another little emergency repair that you could do if you've got some seam sealer is if you had a tear, for example, you know, maybe a little cut out here where a pole had gone through it or a tent peg, you could use your bag, um, it usually the same material as your tent, cut a little square out and then just put a patch on using the, the seam sealer. It's not gonna be pretty, uh, but it, it might get you out of trouble in a pinch. Some tents come with a little repair patch that you can glue on with this stuff, uh, but it needs must sometimes. You could always order a new bag when you get home. The trick is though, not to get any holes in your tent. 
I'm all out of tips for this video. If you found any of them useful at all, hit the, the like button for me. Um, let me know which was your favorite in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.